What's up, everyone? I'm Stephen Harrell with Tiny House Listings, and I am here with Gabriel Gentile. He is the production manager for our Tiny House Listings build. Uh, so he is responsible for overseeing all the activity that goes with building our tiny houses. You know, I mean, one of the main things, you know, as being the production manager is we have to make sure that our quality is up to standard. You know, we don't want to send out crap or, you know, we want people to walk into our tiny houses and be like, wow, they really thought of everything. You know, they, you know, they took their time and made sure everything looked good. You know, they didn't just cut corners and, you know, they made sure, you know, the customer was going to be happy at the end of the day. So, yeah. I mean, that's our main goal. And so the, the thing about that is that most people who buy a tiny house from us, they never even step foot into our warehouse. Yeah. So we have to do a good job of like relaying that to them. What do you think about that? Right. Yeah. So whether like you or I like, you know, send these people a video explaining it to them, um, saying, hey, this is the layout, this is a previous model we did, what do you think about this? That kind of helps the people yeah. from long distances, you know, like we take videos, oh, these are the colors you can choose from, mm -hmm. these are the layouts you can get, like which one do you want? And then that gives us our bullet points for when we go to build, say, hey, this lady right. wants, you know, painted cabinets. Yeah. That way we know and I know, and the customer knows that everything's going smoothly and according to plan, even though they're not coming to, you know, a traditional job site every day right. to look at their tiny house. It's really important to make them feel comfortable in terms of like knowing that they're in good hands. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then that's one of my, I try to do that a lot more and more. I try to like interact with the customers more because yeah. I want them to feel comfortable with the person that's building their house. Right. I don't want them to just think, you know, we're some contracting company that slaps these things together just to make money. Like, no, our main goal here is to help people with, you know, affordable housing or, let them, you know, live off grid like they want or just, right. you know, Airbnbs or, you know, whatever. I mean, they're real popular across full-time living, Airbnbs and just everything you do. And, you know, we don't want people to just be like, oh, that's just another builder. Right. Yeah. We want to be personable. I think that kind of goes along with like, if you look at the tiny houses that we started building to start out with, what they look like then versus what they look like now, it's evolved a lot. Yeah, we've, we've definitely changed from when we first started to what we are now is because we also took, you know, customers feedback saying, Hey, what about this? You know, what if you shifted that a little bit things and then just kind of taking people's reactions yeah. and going from there saying, Hey, you know, let's, let's do something different and see how it reacts. And cause we want our models to be the best models we produce. We don't want them to be just, Oh, look at that. That's a model. Right. You know what I mean, we want them to be like, Oh wow. They really thought of everything. Yeah. You know, they thought of the layout and how, people live in tiny houses and they're hitting all demographics, not just young people or old people or yeah. and, you know, and not, like that. Well, not only that, like you got to think when we started building tiny houses, tiny house listings have been in the market for like 12 years. Right. And so we also reached out to over 200,000 people for our first one to model tiny. So it's like a feedback. Our first model was like a, a feedback based on that. So already we were already kind of ahead of the game in terms of like what we're building because we're right. building something that people already wanted and so from there we're getting even better and better right true yeah our, our tiny houses definitely have gone from like really really good quality to even better quality just because of the layout changes yeah you know what i mean like a moving you know like one of the things we do we make the bathroom a little bigger here yeah now and we put the washer and dryer in the bathroom because one you don't see the the washer and dryer in your kitchen living room area and two it's a little bit helps with noise reduction you know, nobody wants to see your dirty laundry when you got guests over. Right. You know, and that was from customer feedback. They're like, hey, why don't we do this? And it's like, you know, we can make it work. Let's try it. Yeah. And it's been working out real well for us. A lot of people really like it. Yep. And I think that's probably the way we're going to go. Yeah. And you know, got to think the materials that we use are getting better and better and better. Like we were using a uh, shiplap product from a local company for our walls and we right. just didn't like some of the quality. We had some quality concerns and then we moved over to a much better, uh, but more consistent material. Just little things like that. Yeah, stuff like that. That all helps the build. It helps keep the guys in line, like knowing they're working with the same material yeah. every day or the same two types of materials every day. That way they know how it goes up. Right. They know how it works, you know, how it gets cut, you know, where your variations are, like yeah. what you can allow and what you can't. So Yeah, and that's the thing though, like all these little things that we're doing, I think are like one percent better. But when you do twenty of them and you're twenty percent better, it all adds up to like people can see it when they walk in the tiny house, they're looking around for things that are an issue right? right and we walk in and see that like wow like i'm just looking around everything looks good that makes a big difference right like especially when we, you know we do most of our tiny houses we do video tours we do professional photo shoots like we want you know all that to be consistent each time we do it right yeah we don't you know we want 
you know, our, our big thing is we want these models to be models, but we also want people to put their little personal touch on them. Absolutely. That's why, you know, one of the things we do is we offer, you know, painted cabinets. Yeah. Right. So that way, you know, they're tiny houses, you know, built by tiny house listings and it's, it's the model we offer, but right. then it's also personable and they're like, oh man, I really like these blue cabinets. Mm -hmm. Can I do green? Like, yeah. yeah, you can. Of course you can. Right. You know, so we like to give people some sort of options so they can have the personal experience, you know, for yeah. their build, not just like going to a car lot and picking, you know, the same model truck that's just yeah. in a different color. Like, you know, we want them to be able to come into the house and be like, yeah, this is my home. I, yeah. you know, I chose that. I did these reasons for that thing. Well, ever since you've been here building these tiny houses with us since the beginning and uh, you've been the production manager. And so right out the gate, we made the decision to make sure all of our tiny houses are certified. If you look at a lot of builders, not knocking anyone, but yeah. they, they haven't even moved over to certifying their tiny houses. And we made that decision right out the gate. So what do you, how important do you think that was? I mean, that's real important. Um, I think you probably touched up on this in the past, but you know, tiny house listings or tiny houses in general have evolved from the DIY standpoint of things to professional builds, inspections, yeah. uh, seals and stuff like that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, these things are becoming so popular that people also want to have the security of the resale factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's going to be a lot easier to resale something that's been certified and inspected than it is for someone to be like, Hey, just slap this together. It may look good. It may yeah. run good, but you know, there's no record of it being inspected. There's no record of somebody else checking your work. Yeah. Resale value. I mean, that itself is an entire video. Yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole nother factor, but you know, the certifications is, is huge because you know, Someone may miss something, I may right. miss something, or you may miss something, and then that the inspector comes in and is like, hey, you guys forgot to do that. And then it's like a quick reminder, like, we need to be on top of this and get it going because we don't want to be caught again. I mean, it's not going to hurt anybody, yeah. but, you know, we like to have, when I do the inspections, I like to just not run through the trailer, but, like, I know how the inspectors want it done, so I go from point to point to point. They're like, right. wow, that looks great. Wow, that looks great. Because yeah. they're like, we take their feedback, just like we take customers' feedback and change how we do things. Absolutely. And you know, like a lot of people don't like this, but the tiny house movement has matured. Um, to start out with a lot of tiny houses were very much DIY right. and people, which was great. And we still have a lot of that. But if you look at most tiny house communities, for example, they will not let you bring a tiny house into their park unless it's certified. So like, that's just one more reason out of many to make sure that our tiny houses are certified. Well, like, yeah, like the difference between, you know, someone who builds their own tiny house and a professional builder is, the inspections we were talking about and then the fact that you know someone who does a diy may not know certain uh electrical codes or how certain wires run or what a what a outlet can handle what a you know dryer can handle stuff like that and then you know that could cause fires so if someone's a diyer i'm not knocking people who don't who do the diy but you know sometimes they make mistakes or they don't fully understand and there's also not a you know ton of information on like youtube or you know, on Google or anything like that to kind of tell you, like, this is what you need to do. Yeah, because you got to think, if you're building just a one-off tiny house, right, you have to have tools, you have to have a space to build it, you have all this upfront cost. But I think if you're someone that has people, access to people, like your father has, you know, carpentry right. experience or plumbing and, you know, your guy down the road or your boss or whatever, and they have access to a place to build it, uh, where you're out of the elements or whatnot and they have tools i think then maybe a doi situation makes sense for you because you can save a lot of money yeah that's true i mean saving a lot of money is like a huge bonus for when you're building your own thing whether it's your own house or your own tiny house right um but like you were talking about with the elements like you have you know if you have the people there to help you as a diy or like right. someone who knows how to frame and someone who knows how to do roofing yeah. and you can get your structure up mm -hmm. and your outside, you can get it up and covered and wrapped real quick. Then mm -hmm. yeah, you can take your time on the inside. Right, but, right. You know, one of the benefits of building with a builder yeah. is that they're in a controlled environment where they can, they're not exposed to the elements and your wood and your, your materials aren't getting soaked in rain, snow or right. stuff like that. And then that helps, you know, then you can have people working on multiple things right. at the same time. You know, when you're doing, a, you know, even when you're doing a house traditionally outside, you have to work on one thing and then move to the next until the thing's enclosed. Right. Because, you know, you can't have the electro, electrical guys getting rained on. That's true. You know, it's just not going to work. So you, that's the safety aspect of it. Right. You know, if you have the people to do it, then yeah, go ahead DIY. But if you don't, like, 
a builder is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, it's been that way since the beginning. There's those people who just want to have that experience and say, look, I live in a house that I built myself. But that's there's always going to be those types of folks, which I think is great. But there's also, there's some people, they've never picked up a hammer and they have no intention. Right. And then you also have, like, for example, NOAA. We certify our houses currently through NOAA. They have a self-certification program, so you can do that all yourself, which is not a bad way to go. But you have people like us, Tiny House, Tiny House Listens, we have contracts with suppliers where we buy items in bulk so we can save money. Right. Um, and so before you know it, like, yeah, you, you can you can build a tiny house by yourself, but does it really make sense uh, to do that when really you're just paying a little bit more for some, especially for a builder who's very efficient, but we're extremely efficient. Right. Right. And so we fig- we're always figuring out ways to cut costs down. So in many ways, depends on how you look at it. it I would say more times than not, it makes more sense to build a tiny house for the builder. Yeah, for sure. Building a tiny house, you know, with a builder is a better way to go. But then there's also builders out there and it might be something we get into, you know, in the future where we build it to a certain point and right. then kind of hand the keys over to the customer. So like we make sure all the electrical is good. Yeah. We make sure the, the frame of it's good, you know, right. solid. It's been inspected. And then people can just go wild and crazy with their interior yeah. or if they want to do special like wood siding like live edge siding on the outside like they can do that but you know if if you can get a project from a builder Mm -hmm. where it's just the shell and it's got the roof on at least yeah and you know the walls are you know got the 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 walls got the uh sheathing up yeah sheathing and the and the house wrap up you know then you're at least okay to work on it and take your time and figure out what you want to do because it's more protected from the elements yeah so if you're a DIYer, that's something I would look into more is trying to find a shell yeah. where you know it's built securely, especially if you don't know what you're doing with framing. Or and then stuff. also you got to think with a uh, DIY, you're going to have to come up with the cost of all the materials yourself. yourself. Right. Of course, you can go as you, uh, you can pay as you go. But with us, like for us, for example, we offer financing. Right. Right. So you can pay that monthly payment. Yeah, you're paying the interest rate, but maybe that makes more sense too. So I guess it, for me, it just depends on what your situation is whether you want to go DIY or have someone like us build a tiny house for you. Yeah. Yeah. DIY, you know, like I said, cause you know, we're a builder, we have the accounts, yeah. we have the materials on hand. We'll be able to just pull what we need and build it. Right. You know, if you don't have the cash up front and you're not, you know, a self contract or anything like that, and you can't, you know, go and get your siding on credit, right. You know, and then pay it back when you're done. Like you have to come up with that upfront cost. So, Absolutely. you know, if you buy a shell or even, you know, if you were to buy a shell and start at the halfway mm-hmm. point, you're still looking at, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. And if you, you know, want to get it done quickly, you're, you know, you know, maxing out credit cards is not the way to go. You no, know and also I mean? think about this too. All right. Say if you takes you a year to build a tiny house yourself, which is very common. I've heard that. Right. Or if you can get a tiny house from a, a builder like us or others or others, it, it takes eight weeks. That's two months. Those 10 months that you're living in a tiny house versus paying, what, $1,500 a month for rent? That yeah. can help offset the cost just right there. Right, yeah, for sure. I mean, because our the tiny houses that we build and some of the ones that others build, like with the financing available, if you can get into it quicker, yeah, you know, and it's done, then you're gonna save a lot more money in the back end because you're not paying rent while you're building the thing, or you're not paying, you know, for your land while you're building the thing. Right. And you're not paying rent and all that on top That's of each a good other point. because yeah. you, you know, it's it, it hurts somebody when they gotta pay their rent to live. And then they got to pay their bills to, you know, the land they bought. And then on top of that, they got to pay their vendors, right. you know, you know, 1500 you know, $2,000 here and there adds up yeah. on top of your rent. Like, that's crazy. Or what if, like, you built it yourself and you did some plumbing wrong and the whole thing gets flooded and you got to rip all the walls out. That's no fun either. No, it ain't no fun. I've, I've been there with some, some leaky pipes. <laughs> so what do you think? DIY or have a tiny house builder build a tiny house for you? Let us know in the comments below.